you believe in for? Amen. Yeah. I had to learn that from a bunch of Russian guys. Out in Ohio, the car dealer, so I couldn't get my title, couldn't get my car. I call him, I say, I go, man, Vladimir, where's, where's the title? He goes, I, I said the title, I said title. I go, I go, let me talk to somebody else. And so he'd send me to like Alexiev, you know. Alexiev, nobody sends me my title. We send you a title, we send you a title. I'm like, well, I don't see it, you know. <laughs> But I, I, I finally, I, I was getting worried. I was driving illegally because that guy's. It was almost like I was forced to be frustrated. You know, anybody here forced to be frustrated to where maybe you just need to start believing and start claiming? Amen. You know, I got the title D. I got some faith in me. Amen. Amen? Amen. It's the opposite of fear. Amen. You know, this preacher man had to learn something. And so I, I said, I, I own the title. I said, sorry, I started declaring it. I got the title deed. And that, and that day that I began to declare that, that title came. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, that's my message. Let's go home. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Sister Ray, I, I got to tell you, I, I looked over at you and your family. And I, I'm just reminded what, what a miracle your children are. Benjamin, I mean, I know a, a, a little about that. And then I see Quinn. I don't know if anybody knows the story even behind Quinn or, and, and what they went through to adopt Quinn. I mean, it wasn't easy. It was, it was incredible. <laughs> and I looked over there, and, and she's worshiping the Lord, you know. Got her hands praised. I don't know what the Lord saved those children from, but I thank the Lord. I don't like to take things for granted. I really don't. And, but when you get into the house of the Lord, let them, let them, let them open your eyes. You know, I think about this virus that's going around, which is bad as it is. I'm going to tell you what, it's opened our eyes to some things that we took for granted, isn't it? Uh -huh. See, God's not afraid to do that. He's not afraid to do that. He's not afraid to let us deal with some things that maybe it'll open our eyes. And we forget how good, how good the Lord has been to us. Sometimes you don't know until it's been taken away, you know. I'm sorry, I'm rambling, but that really struck me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a little ornery. I'm a little ornery. See, that's how I fight that religious spirit. You know, that religious spirit wants, you know, it, it wants comfort. You know, the religious spirit wants comfort. It's like, I want comfort and I want control. Like, don't do nothing that I, that's outside my boundary. But you, are, you are in the wrong church, man. You're in the wrong church. You're the wrong preacher. Yeah, I was, we had a men's breakfast yesterday. And um, I decided I wasn't going to speak. I was going to let the guys talk. I wanted to hear what was on their heart. These are guys that have, man, they've, they've seen some dark places, seen some dark places. And they got up and they just began to share some things that they've been through and what God's, what God's, done, what God's done on their heart. I saw, I just begin, a, a couple years ago, I began to cry out to the Lord. I said, Lord, where's the men? Where's the men? I said, you need to raise some men up. I said, I don't care where you get them from. I need to see some men that are hungry for you. And boy, you better fasten your seat. I believe that, I believe this is gonna be the place to come for a man. <laughs> and a woman, but I'm believing. You can believe what you want to believe. I'm just believing that God's raised them. So God's going to pick them up out of the mire. He's going to clean them up. He's going to find that, that little seed of faith in them. And he's going to change them. He's going to transform them. I heard that yesterday. And, I, and out, of their, out of their misery, out of their pain, they begin to speak. And I heard like prison doors opening. I'm like, I need to get these men in front of other men. Because they're, go they're going to have a delivering word. The Bible said, I told him yesterday, I said, when you speak, speak as the oracle of God. But God's brought you through something, 
and you begin to speak it, you know you got the word of the Lord in you. I don't care where you've been. It doesn't matter. If you're going to speak, speak as of the oracle of God. And these ragtag bunch of guys, <laughs> it's like, let's get together. I heard coming out of their mouth a delivery message. They didn't even know it, but that's what I heard. It's like sh iron sharpeneth iron. I'll tell you what, the devil's mad. And too bad, right? Oh, the devil's mad. I'm going to praise the Lord. Oh, the devil's mad. I'm going to praise the Lord. Oh, the devil's mad. I'm going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We don't care that he's mad. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, what do I want to preach this morning? <laughs> oh, my Lord. I hope it got you happy, but I'm going to make you mad now. I don't, I, I, it's going to be that It's going to be that devil inside you that's going to be mad. That, that thing that tries to taunt you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get you uncomfortable a little bit. I tell you what, God got me uncomfortable. There was some stuff I got so uncomfortable, I wanted it out of my life. I wanted it out of my life. You know, I, I, uh, I shared this a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to read the scripture. I'm just going to kind of talk about it. It's in Genesis 26. Uh, but it was talking about how uh, the Philistines came and filled the wells that Abraham had dug with earth. Filled those wells. And the Philistines were a constant nemesis of God's people. They were worshipers of Dagon and the Asheroth and Baal, Zebub. Um, it was it was uh, it was demonic. And um, well, Paul, what are you telling us that for? Well, Philistines rep that's what the Philistines represents. It represents the world. You know, we can be serving the devil. We don't even know it. <laughs> oh, Paul, let's you know you're getting a little heavy. Yeah, okay. Okay. He's subtle. And you don't even know that you are. You know, when the Exodus came, when God delivered his people, he delivered them from bondage. And I'm going to tell you what, when God is delivering you something, as tough as it is, it's tougher for the enemy. Just look at Exodus. Well, God was delivering his people. God brought an onslaught of the, on the enemy that they like, get them out of here. <laughs> Come on. Right? And then after they released them, Pharaoh goes, oh my gosh, what did we do? What were we thinking? He said, we let them stop serving us to go serve their God. You hear what he said? Because they were in bondage. See, bondage is, is serving. Is serving the devil is what it is. He knows how once they were released, he, still, he pursued them again. Because he wants, he wants your back. So it's gonna be a, there's going to be a warfare. But see, you've got to forsake that stuff. But that's what the Philistines represent. They filled it with, with dirt, with the dirt of the world, that, that living water that's in you. And then Isaac got inspired to begin redigging those wells because he knew the wells were filled with miracles and wonders and signs and healing and deliverance. It's living water. That's what, it, if you look, if you study that out, it's in Genesis 26. He called them flowing waters, wells of flowing. And if you look up that word flowing, it literally meant living, living waters. And see, he honored that past generation. He's like, there was something about that past generation. Abraham knew something. See, there were promises given to him. And see, we've seen things in this house before. Haven't we, Brother Allen? We've seen miracles. We've seen, that was dug by a previous generation. I say this to honor the previous generation. But I'm going to tell you what, they got stopped up. <laughs> We're going to redig them. And if you look at scripture, just read it out. 
Isaac began to, and there was opposition. He began to, he began to dig up those wells. He began to dig up those wells. And that's how I'm going to do. I'm going to plow a little bit. I'm going to plow a little bit. Because we fill our life with dirt. We don't know we do, but we get influenced by the Philistines. We, get, we start worshiping the same thing that the world worships. We start caring for the same things that they care about. And it starts to infiltrate us. We don't know it until finally the wells are stuffed up. And we, and, we don't, and, and we don't even know what it is to be a Christian anymore. There's no power in our lives. Amen? We're going to put an end to that. That's what God's put on my heart. And I believe you are a hand-picked people to help dig. Amen? This is good news. It's good news. Yeah, those Philistines, man. I mean, that's what, that's what brought down the mighty man of God, Samson. <laughs> you know, mighty in God and no self-discipline. <laughs> it was the seduction of, of the Philistines. So you, you study it out. My point is, is it is easy to get seduced. It is easy to get uh, influenced and penetrated. And our lives filled with stuff we don't even know about. I believe God wants to do a cleansing. I really do. I do. I don't think the devil is afraid of your gifting. I think he's afraid of holiness. Amen. That's what he's afraid of. You, you get a person that starts to shed themselves of some stuff. And it's like, come on, devil. It, it just doesn't have you anymore. That's what he's afraid of. See, we, I'm believing for revival. I'm believing, for, I'm believing this is going to be a revival house. I do. I believe it's going to be people going to hear some things they haven't heard in a while. And you think revival is me stirring up your emotions? That's not revival. Revival comes from repentance. That's where it comes from. That's where it comes from. And repentance isn't just like, well, I feel bad about what I did. It's changing. It's saying, I'm, I'm turning from that. I'm turning from that. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from that which they've been doing, I will hear and I will heal their land. I will heal your life. That's where revival comes. It comes from a change. That's just by working ourselves up into a frenzy. Oh, I'm going to praise the Lord because I know that there's warfare. I know that when we praise, we're inviting the presence of the Lord in. If you're, if you're not a work, become a worshiper. Just become a worshiper. That sends confusion into the enemy's camp. He don't want you praying. He wants you complaining. He wants you murmuring. He wants you worried and fearful. He doesn't want praise coming out of your mouth. Well, Paul, I don't feel like praising. Well, let, let the feeling come afterwards, you know. It, you, you're not supposed to be directed by emotion. You're supposed to be directed by the word of the Lord. You know, it's just like uh, something like forgiveness. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I want to forgive the. Well, forgive him anyways. Let 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 your decision, let your will take take uh, authority over your emotions. Okay, then the emotions will follow. <laughs> anyway, so let me preach my message, whatever it is. God wants to cleanse. That living water. That living, that living water represents the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in our life. You'll learn that. We talked about that several weeks ago when we were talking about the Samaritan woman. Jesus says, man, if you knew who was asking you for water, you'd ask him for living water. And that, and that represented that well, that well of living water. Is the Holy Spirit but but you'll notice that Isaac definitely experienced resistance while he was digging those wells and so will you but you keep doing what is right those wells of cleansing cleansing our, our mindsets you know systems of thought create culture that's what they do and that's why I've been shutting off the media I don't care what the media is. I want to hear from what, what God is saying. Because the media is filled with, with the world. Even good media. They can't help it. Our source needs to be the word of the Lord. I don't want my thoughts filled with that. I, I want my thoughts to begin to get cleansed. 
If you don't, if you don't think that that words and 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 and, and uh, those thoughts create a culture, just begin to look at the youth. See what they're teaching in schools right now. See what they're. It'll it'll shock you. <laughs> it'll shock you. I've seen things that have completely changed, and just in my lifetime, our schools of thought, schools of thought, and. You know, because now it's the now the new word is you gotta be woke now, you know. <laughs> you gotta be woke. Yeah, that's the new thing. You gotta open your eyes to the to the new world. You gotta be woke. I'll tell you who needs to be woke, that's the church needs to wake up. Come on. You know, Paul, you're 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 just trying to brainwash us. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We need our brainwashed. You know, you ever use those other, they say, well, you're just you just want to brainwash those people. You're right. <laughs> The Bible says the word will cleanse us. That's what he says, you know. So sometimes you don't have to disagree with people, you know. Oh, man. I, I need to see transformation in my mind when I come together in the body. We need to hear things here as a body that we don't hear in the world. Amen? I mean, we, we have a culture now that that thinks the government needs to satisfy all of our needs. It's always, it's, it's always the government's fault or it's, they gotta do it for us. You know, we get sucked into that. We're like, oh yeah, what's the government doing? I'm, I'm a citizen of heaven. Come on, I'm a citizen of heaven. David said, I was young and now I'm old. Now he's talking, I'm not talking, that's him talking. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor, nor it's his descendants begging for bread. He didn't say the ones that keep their eyes on the government. His point is, is that's the, God is where our sustenance comes from. He's our provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. But see, the, 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 we subtly begin to look at the politicians and the government. And uh, that's what makes me mad. You know? and, and that's what was happening. I'd listen to this stuff. I'm like, where's my mind? I, I got to clean my brain. Am I talking to anybody here? I, don't, I really don't know how to say it. I'm just, I'm just speaking from my heart right now and what I see in the Word. I think we need our brainwashed. <laughs> I think we need to transform it. What's the Word say? Uh, let me read it. I tell you what, I'll read a scripture there. That way, that way it's not just my opinion. God's thoughts need to replace ungodly thoughts or worldly thoughts. I believe that's why we need to come together all the time because the devil works overtime throughout the week. Throws stuff at you all week long. All week long. Subtly, not so subtly. And we got to come together and remember who we are and the way we should be thinking. Otherwise, we fall victim to that. And we lose our faith. And we operate in fear all the time. And there's no power in us because our wells have been filled with dirt. Amen? Phil, uh, Philippians, I'm gonna, uh, if you turn to chapter 3. Uh, in, in verse 17 it says brethren join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us for many walk of whom I often told you and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction whose God is their appetite and whose glory is in their shame listen to this it says, and who set their minds on earthly things I mean, he compared those who are enemies of the cross that set their mind on earthly things. Imagine that that's their downfall. I mean, who doesn't look at earthly things? Right? But that's the danger. Ever see an athlete try and give glory to God and then shut them down right away? <laughs> you say, uh, okay, well, just tell us about the game, you know. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. See, the, the, the world is at enmity with the Lord. And there we are hanging out with them, taking on all of their customs and all the things that move them. I, I, I'm, I'm guilty as well. I have to guard my heart against that stuff. But God wants to take you higher. If you, if you read a few verses before that, in verse 13, it says, Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, 
I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, Jesus is calling us upward. You gotta get off the earth. Get your, get your thoughts off the earthly thoughts and worldly thoughts. We walk by faith, not by sight. In other words, we can't just look at the things of the world. We are believers. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta stir up that faith in you. Whenever we get together, I believe a transformation should take place. Because if you go if you go to verse 20 of Philippians 3, it says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory. My, my prayer is, Lord, make Cornerstone a transformation center where people can get transformed. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, there's scripture for brainwashing you. Don't wash your brain. <laughs> Don't wash the brain out. Because that's where the battle is. That's where it is. Right between the ears. That's where the battle is. Oh, Lord, cleanse our minds. Like only he knows how to do. There's got to be a willingness on our part, though. God's word has cleansing power. It's likened to water because it cleanses. Paul said that he might sanctify and cleanse the church with the washing of water by the word. That's what he wants to do. His, his people. He doesn't want his people thinking like the world. Our citizenship is in heaven. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his dear son. I'm not supposed to think like the world. I'm not supposed to act like the world. I'm not supposed to talk like the world. I'm not supposed to respond like the world. I'm supposed to be driven by the word. You know, lies entangle, but truth unentangles. It untangles. What's the word? That's right. Entangles and then untangles, right? Not unentangles. Just untangles. There. I was right. They'll be laughing at me. You know, situations in your life can get so tangled, so complicated, because we allow it to do that. But the truth, which is the word, it untangles. Sometimes just getting some of that stuff out of your life that has so entangled your life needs to be washed by the word. Let the truth, for you will know the truth and the truth will make you free from all that stuff that entangles. Lies entangle and, and the world is filled with them. It's constant deception, constant. This is not heaven, this is the earth. We live in a place where the Bible says Satan is enthroned. But the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to penetrate and divide soul and spirit. It can help you divide what, what is real and what's not real. The word of God is sharp. That's why we got to have it. You know, speaking of transform transformation, seeds die and are transformed. I know we've been talking about, Jesus says, unless a, a seed falls to the ground, into the earth, and die, it'll remain alone. See, if you just, that's what we, that compares us to seeds. That's a, but, but we have to be, when it is planted in good soil, it, 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 it really no longer exists as you know it anymore. It, it is, it's transformed. By itself, it remains this inert thing. Nothing happens. It just sits alone. But you get it into, into the Word. You begin to die to some things. You begin to shed, your, shed some things. And it begins to transform into a fruitful. It's not even the same 
thing anymore. That's what, it, that's what the Bible means by that. But in that seed is inherent powers that exist. And the seed doesn't even know it until it starts to get stimulated with the right environment. If it sits in a cold, dry place, nothing happens. But you put it into warm, moist soil, and it, it literally transforms. That's what I want to see happen into our lives. But it, it requires a death. Isn't that exciting? I know that's a, I, I know it's like, Paul, when are you going to get off that, that topic? When God tells me to get off of it, I want to get off of it. But it, it, it will never look the same. It'll never, it'll never look the same. There's lives that looked one way, and as they begin to die to the things that used to turn them on, that life's going to be totally transformed. You're not even going to recognize them anymore. seed is no longer a seed. It's a fruitful plant. Amen. Isn't that exciting? Amen. Come on. One of my favorite scriptures is this one. It says, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Anybody scoff at your, your faith? Anybody experience that at all? Like, what are you going there for? They're a bunch of Bible thumpers. I, I just heard that the other day. I heard that, man, my brother back there. He's like, man, what are you going there? They're a bunch of Bible thumpers. I'm like, yeah, we are. You know, we, we're, we we're brainwashed and we're Bible thumpers. You know. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, you know, we're like, oh, I'm not. I'll be like, yeah, I am. I'm not going to sit in that seat, the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Huh, what's that? That's the word. Amen. And on his law, on his word, he meditates day and night. And he will be like what? A tree firmly planted by streams of water. Which yields its fruit in its season. Brothers and sisters, you have fruit. There is fruit that is yours. We're to live a fruitful life. We are. It's not just death and destruction and suffering. God wants to do something with your life. But it will require a death. It's going to change. It's going to take some brainwashing. <laughs> Changing the way you think, the way that you act, the way that you talk. And you, and you, you might have to just do it before you feel like it. Maybe you should just do it. And its leaf does not wither. And whatever he does, he prospers. I'm sorry, that's the word of the Lord. That's the word of the Lord. You can reject it and say, well, oh, that's for other people. Jesus said, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Paul said it as well. He said, that, that which you sow does not come to life unless it dies. Well, Paul, what are you talking about dying? Dying to this stuff that has so entangled us. Don't flirt with it. Get away from it. <laughs> Those Egyptians want you back. No, you got to come back. You got to come back and serve us. Well, Paul, I wasn't serving the devil. You want to bet. The Bible says you are. I know I don't expect anybody to shout me down now and get all and amen me, but that's what you're doing. And, I, and I'm sorry, I, this might sound a little tough, but I, I don't I don't think that's, that when we fall into sin that anybody needs to feel sorry for us. I, I, I think I think you have the capacity to change. I know I know I had the capacity. I didn't think I did. But I just begin to say, you know, I'm not doing that anymore. 
And it, and it was hard. It felt like a death. There's stuff going on in your own life that you feel like, you know, I'm, I'm miserable. That's because probably some things are dying. Maybe there's some people that have left you. Or maybe, I, I don't know, or maybe you're trying to get away from something. And it's hard. It is a death. But you can do it. You can do it. As a matter of fact, God requires us to do it. <laughs> there is a heaven and there is a hell. Oh, Paul, don't talk about that. Churches don't talk about hell anymore. Well, okay. Well, then cross them all out. Cross it all out in your Bible. Because I know where I was going. I I'm sorry I did. And I had to change. What was the scripture you read? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of salvation. It's okay to fear the Lord. It's, a, it's okay to say, you know, I need that rebellious spirit out of me. Because that's what I was. I was a rebel. Nah, I'm not doing that. Well, that's not, that doesn't mean it's divine. Oh, yeah, it is. Because that's where rebellion started, right up when all them angels, when Lucifer fell. He started a rebellion in heaven. And we rebel, it's, it's demonic. I don't want any part of this kingdom. I don't want, want any part of this culture. Lord, help me. Cleanse me. Teach me. The only way it's going to happen is, is not through the media. It's through, through his word. Let God speak to you. If he can speak to me, he can speak to you. <laughs> I, I just believe God wants a revival in this house. And, and it's going to happen because of holiness. Because there's a people that want to be pure. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I make, make mistakes all the time. As a matter of fact, i got to come up here and share them half the time with you. But there's got to be a desire. There's got to be a turning away. There's some things that have just had you long enough. God wants to take you higher. He's a good guy. You know, it's interesting, it's right in front of our face all the time, the cross. <laughs> there was a death, a burial, but then there was a resurrection. Jesus was called a seed right in, the, right in the first part of Genesis. He was referred to as the seed. And he's our example, right there in front of us all the time. There's going to be a death. There's some things you've got to bury. Oh, but God's not going to leave you there. There's a resurrection power in your life. Amen? Amen. There's some things we got to die to. I was a rebel long enough. I tried that. Man, I was... I know, I know a lot of you, and not, a lot of you did too. But that stuff's got to go. Let's see, what else exciting can I tell you this morning? Joshua said, separate yourselves for a holy purpose, for tomorrow I will do wonders among you. There's so, it's, it's such a powerful verse. There's a separation most likely taking place in your life. There might be some things that have gone away. I know there was a separation take, that took place in my life. God, God separated, and it's, it's a difficult process. Because he's, but he's doing it because he's got a holy purpose for you. And he's going to do wonders in your life. God never intended us to live outside his kingdom. And we've lived outside his kingdom long enough. <laughs> At some point, you got to decide, what kingdom am I going to live in? Because you can't live in both. And I'm going to tell you what, there's a cleansing coming into the body of Christ first. You know, there was a, a prophet, what's his name, Hank uh, and Kuhneman, um, he hangs out with my, my buddy uh, Mario. Me and Mario, we're, like, we're good friends now. Mario Morello. Yeah. But he had a prophecy about snow, that there were going to be parts of this country that are going to be hit with snow. And I mean, right back in, there was what, earlier this week, uh, Lee's sister, uh, Lisa, uh, who's down there in the deep south in Mississippi, they had more snow. It was colder down there. I mean, look at Texas. And, but look at here. Snow represents cleansing. 
check it out. Check out the, uh, Psalm 51. Psalm 51 talks about, Lord, make me clean. Wash me pure as snow. And then you see snow means cleansing. Anybody see a little snow out there? I woke up this morning, and it began to dawn on me. I knew I wanted to talk about cleansing. And, and I'm looking at all this. And, and, of course, the first thing I wake up, I have to make sure I'm in agreement with my wife because, we, you know, we can't. I can't let any wedge get in between us. She loves the snow. And I wake up, I go, oh, honey, look how pretty it is outside. <laughs> when she moved up here from Mississippi, I'd wake up in the morning and she'd be looking out the window. She's like, I think I just saw a snowflake. Because she had, she'd wait for that snow. I'm like, honey, don't be praying for that stuff. She's like, it's so, she's like, it's so pretty. And uh, she's changed my attitude. When I see all this snow, it's like, okay, there's a cleansing taking place. God wants to clean us up because he wants to do something. He wants to do something. Revival. See, you can't, you can't, um, you can't expect the, the power to deliver people from something that you're hung up with yourself. <laughs> Amen? Amen. I don't know how he's going to, I don't know what that means in your own life. I know what it means in my life. Sometimes it's just mindsets. Some, some people just live in fear all the time. And, or, 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 or just drawn to things. God wants to clean up his church. Because I believe, he says, I'm, I'm not going to put new wine in old wineskins. Because it will destroy you. But I believe God wants to fill us with new wine. New wine represents the Holy Spirit. Because I think he's getting the church ready for one of the greatest outpourings of the Holy Spirit the world has ever seen. That's what's in my spirit. Oh, Lord, be it unto us. Be it unto us. I know it's a little tough, but the Bible says that judgment comes to the house of the Lord first. He deals with us first. When I say judgment, it's like, okay, we're here in the same coronavirus as everybody else, but how is the church going to respond? I believe it should be our greatest hour. I believe people will come flocking to the church because they need to be transformed. There are going to be so much dirt in their mind. They're going to be so gooped up with the thoughts of the world. I believe the next generation of young people, as much as I don't understand them, there's, there's a void in them. You cannot starve a person from the things of God and then not start to feel hunger. And as much as we can't relate to young people, we're not going to be able to relate to them when they get a fire for the Lord that we've never seen before. Because they've been deprived. Because I, I was raised up with them. Was, you know, with the things of God, but I rebelled against it until I was so full of it, and my, my, I, I literally destroyed my life. But I believe there's a, there's a hunger coming that we've never seen before. I believe God's preparing His church. He's preparing you. Or to step out of that stuff that's so entangled us for so long. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 I know I'm probably preaching to the choir, right? Because we're all like choir boys and girls, right? You guys, you guys, you guys aren't hung up with anything, you know. It's only me, you know. There's got to be a reason why God put me up here, <laughs> you know, to talk about even some of my own experiences. My Lord. Sometimes God wants to do a little adjustment. Sometimes, sometimes our life needs a big adjustment. Amen. <laughs> there's, there's a uh, David Goodfellow. You ever? I, I listen to uh, LBGR Sports Radio. I, I don't know. There's a commercial on there that makes me laugh. It's like uh, it's uh, Louis, Louis the chiropractor, Louis. I, don't, I probably don't have this exactly right, but he's like, so uh, you got back problems? Yeah, you come to me, Louie. Yeah. And my, my assistant, Joey. Yeah. He's like, so uh, 
what, what we do is we like to pop. You know, if you got problems with your back, we like to pop the air out of it. Pop the air out of, your, out of your back, you know. Because we, you know how you look. Our theory is, you know, you, you you crack your knuckles. You know, you pop your knuckles. You know, you crack your knuckles. We pop the air out of it. You come in, we'll pop it out of your back. You know. But, yeah, I don't know if I want to go to that. No, you know, because you know, we get the air out of the knuckles because it makes your knuckles real flexible. You know. You know, we we like to use our knuckles. You know. Sometimes, you know, you got to give somebody a knuckle sandwich, you know, you know what I'm saying, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you come talk, you talk to me, Louie and Joey, you know, Joey will tell you to. We'll start on the back of your neck and we'll work right down to the tailbone, you know. A tailbone, that's a funny thing, that's, that's a medical term for tailbone, you know. You know, nobody has an actual tail, you know what I mean. If somebody did, I'd send them to the vet or something. I'm not, I'm not touching them. Oh my gosh. Sometimes you gotta pop it out. <laughs> like a balloon. Pop it out. Like snap, crackle, pop. You know. Have you heard that commercial then? Oh my gosh. Now I'm, I'm obviously embellishing it a little bit. It's not quite that. What they did, they talk about popping the, the air out of the knuckles. Just like your back. We're gonna pop it out. I should, I should. <laughs> Ask Chris, is that true? Is that what that means? Pop the air, pop the air out of back. And if we can't help you, we'll send you to Paulie. He's a man of the cloth over at Cornerstone. <laughs> Jesus, my Lord. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get out. Of, I get out of hand. <laughs> oh my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He's a good God this morning. Amen. He's a good God. Lord, wash us. Lord. Wash our minds, Lord. Let the blood of Jesus, Lord, do its work in our lives. Search my heart, Lord. See what's in me that needs to go, Lord. Reveal things, Lord, that need to go. Lord, empower your people this morning. Father, I believe you, you want your body healthy in mind, in spirit, and in body. Father, I speak health and healing in this house, Lord. Father, I believe miracles are coming. I don't believe that your people need to live with the physical problems that they're living with. I believe, I still believe you're a healer. I've seen, Lord, I've speaking of backs, I've seen backs healed in this church. I've seen it many times. People that were in pain for years, miraculously healed immediately when they come to the altar. Father, I thank you. Lord, even the way that this sanctuary was designed by the previous generation, Lord. Father, I remember he left room at the altar. He wanted a, a large area at the altar because people were going to need to be touched by the Lord. Father, even as Solomon dedicated the first church, it was, in, it was in David's heart to build it, but it was his son that built it. And, and he cried out, he said, Lord, let this be a place where people can come and be forgiven of their sins as they get into things that they shouldn't have gotten into. And let it be a place of healing Amen. where your people can be healed in body. Amen. Lord, what you did back then, you can do now. You're the same God yesterday as you are today. And I speak to health and healing over your body. I speak health and healing Amen. to those whom you love, Lord. Jesus. Father, I thank you for miracles in this house right now in the name of Jesus. I speak the life of God in the name of Jesus. I say rise, rise, rise in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for a penetration of the healing virtue of the Lord to flow through this man's body. Father, I thank you. Lord, you're going to defy the doctors. Lord, I thank you, Father, to stir up his faith in him, Lord. And Father, I thank you, Lord, to even surround him with those that believe with him, those things that he doesn't have to live with. Father, I thank you. He's not going to live his life with some of these things. Lord, you're going to totally renew this man in the name of Jesus. Father, I even thank you for the provision that's coming his way. Father, I thank you, even, even the finances, Lord. Lord, even the provision in his life, Lord. Father, I thank you, he's not going to be a worrier. He's not going to be a worrier. He's going to rise. 
even, even a restoration of the backbone, Lord. Father, even a man of God rising, Lord. Coming out of the ashes, Lord. Coming out of the ashes, Lord. Even one that would praise him. Even the garment of praise on this man. My Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You love him. I thank you for your compassion and your mercy and your power, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for this couple, Lord. Extraordinary, extraordinary things, Lord. And Father, even as I mentioned, Lord, the supernatural work that you've done in their children. Father, even miracle children that they have, that you've placed, Lord, in their care. Father, much more is going to be placed in their care, Lord. They're going to see more miracle children, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord. You're going to satisfy the desires of their heart. Lord, even those things that keep them up at night. Lord, I thank you. They're going to, they're going to walk in joy and in peace in the work of the Lord. It's not going to be a struggle. It's going to be a joy. Father, even the favor of the Lord on this couple, Lord. Even the supernatural favor of the Lord on their lives. Even that which they've accomplished. If they look back even now, they say, look what we've accomplished. Lord, it's only the beginning, Lord. Father, I thank you. I declare them a fruitful plant. And even as they die to their own agenda, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I see branches of leaves and fruit multiplying and multiplying and even need more seeds being planted, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sister, can I pray for you? What's your first name? Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for Amanda, Lord. Lord, I've never met her before, but Father, I see, I see one that is just I see a hunger in her, Lord. Lord, I see even a, a, a sponge, Lord, that's been dried out. Lord, even, even her life, Lord, it's, it's, it's felt dry. It's like, where's... I have a hard time feeling refreshed anymore. Well, Lord, I thank you, Father, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do in Amanda's life. Father, those days are going to be over. Father, she's getting a hold of something, even as I speak right now, Lord. Lord, even as the word was spoken this morning, I just see her shedding herself of some things that have tried to bog her down and to keep her back and to keep her grieving and keep her mourning, Lord. Father, this is a, this is a, I declare this is a new life right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord, to meet her right where she's at. Right where she's at. Sweetie, lead oil, come here. Lay your hands on her. Put your hands right on her heart. God's gonna, God's gonna repair a broken heart. He's repairing one. But the Lord has anointed me to bind up the broken heart and to set captives free. And I see a, a repairing of the heart taking place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Father. You know all the plans that you have for Amanda. And they are not to harm her, but they are to give her a new hope. Father, she hasn't had hope in a while. Father, I, I declare and I speak forth a new hope into her spirit and into her life right now in the name of Jesus. My God, Lord, I just feel the love of the Lord flowing into this woman right now. Amen. I feel the love. Of the, I see Jesus' arms just wrapped around her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see even some relation. God's going to deal with some relationships. There's going to be some that he's going to add to your life. And there's going to be some that he's going to take away. See even some unhealthy relationships. Thank you, Lord. Father, you know how to do it. I don't know her, but I know what I'm seeing right now. And I see you pulling her out. Pulling out where she is. And I see you creating a new life for her in the name of Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give that hand clap to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How do we stand to our feet? Go ahead, Lord. Waymaker. Yeah. 
that is who you are. Oh, he loves you this morning. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. That is who you are, Lord. That is who you, you make are. way, Lord, where there is no way. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is I speak a cleansing are. over this house. That is who I speak an empowerment are. to your people that to reject that which are. needs to be rejected and to that receive that which needs to be rejected. Holy Spirit, move in this house. Oh, river of life flow. Oh, spring up, oh well. Spring up, oh well, in the name of Jesus. Oh, spring up, oh well. Spring up, oh well. Light in the darkness, that is who you are. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to leave the altar open. If you need prayer, do not leave here. I'm holding on to something. If you've never received the Lord in your heart, you come up here in your body and come up here. If there's something that we can come into agreement with you on in your life, you come up here. I feel the presence of the Lord in this house. We're digging wells, wells of living water for us, for us to drink of. Jesus says, the living water that I have, you will drink of and thirst no more. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I speak a blessing over your people right now. In the name of Jesus, as they go, Father, empower your people. Cleanse our mind. And plant us, Lord, into the good soil of the kingdom. Amen. God bless you. Love on one another. Speak to each other as of the oracle of God. Amen.